Bernie Leggett, Director of Sales for AI for Intel. Welcome, Bernie. It's great to see you. Thanks for joining me. What are some of the challenges and the benefits that you're seeing agencies realizing as they're implementing artificial intelligence solutions? Well, I'll start with the benefits. Um, you know, there's a big push today for Gen AI, right, and the benefits that it offers, right? And the key benefit that I've seen is that it helps uh, workers do their jobs more efficiently. Um, what AI is really good at is doing mundane jobs where we have lots of data um, that's kind of routine. And what that does, if you can automate some of those processes, use leveraging AI, um, it frees up the employee to do more innovative tasks. So, um, you know, some of the some of the good use cases I've seen is the uh, virtual assistant or the virtual researcher, um, document creation, a lot of those tasks that are pretty mundane. Mm -hmm. um, those are perfect uh, use cases for AI. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge is, um, you know, one is a mindset thing, right? The workers are still feel a little threatened by the capabilities of AI and the fear is that, you know, the potential that their jobs could be replaced. Uh, I kind of view it a little bit differently that, you know, it's it's like having an intern working for you to do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Now you wouldn't take uh, the work of an intern and just submit it. So you're there to verify it, check it, um, but it's a, a good tool uh, to help you do your job more efficiently. Um, what are agencies running into as far as roadblocks to be able to get to that state where you have more trust in the work that you're getting out of your assistant? Yeah, so there's there's a couple. One I already mentioned. One is more cultural than it is technolo technology. Um, there's just, uh, uh, you know, workers are a little resistant to uh, learn new skills and upskill. So... Uh, they've they've gotten used to the way they do their jobs. They think they do them really well, um, and they're just hesitant to try technology. From an infrastructure perspective, how important is horsepower, and how important is the the total infrastructure that exists in order for agencies to use these tools? Yeah. So the infrastructure, I, I think horsepower is is uh, is a good good topic uh, that a lot of agencies are confused about. I've, I've seen it where companies have more horsepower than they actually need. Um, but uh, even more than that is is the security security piece of it, right? So just making sure that you have good data governance policies uh, where uh, employees don't have, you know, their data is not being compromised or um, they're seeing data that they aren't supposed to see or have access to. So those are... Those are two of the, the common things that I see. Are the de uh, the governance structures that you've seen in data similar to the kinds of structures that you see maybe in a cybersecurity environment where people are talking about zero trust and people can only see this and they can't see that? That, that or, is absolutely correct. Yeah, it's zero trust, uh, you know, the confidential computing standards, right? Um, so you want to make sure you have ro robust attestations, um, access, and... All those things apply uh, when it comes to AI. Mm -hmm. So we talk about the data, uh, you know, maintaining the um, validity of the data, uh, but there's also uh, maintaining the validity of the model, the AI model. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as cyber is getting more, cyber threats are getting more sophisticated, um, there, there's a tendency for, and there's, we're starting to see more um, bad actors try to tamper with models. They play with the weights or the biases or the, or the, you know, or all the things that are going on inside the data or there's, or there's some kind of bias drift, right? Um, so maintaining the, the accuracy of, of the model is also, also an issue. Do we have a sense yet of what the care and feeding of an AI model or AI infrastructure looks like, or is it too early in this technology to really have a, a scope for that? No, yet? we do. We do have care. So you, you know, every anybody that's starting to roll out AI, they need to have a continuous monitoring and, um, and continuous testing, right, to make sure um, the results of the AI is giving is is accurate, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of. And then, you know, I, I think I've seen some agencies, I kind of like the practice of, you know, maintaining, um, you know, the foundational data that the model was built on, 
So you can always reset the model if, if things start to drift or it's been tampered with. Mm -hmm. What are the best ways for agencies to track that, to, to know when it's time to, to maybe do a reset like you just described? Yeah, so usually using automated tools and ironically using AI, right? So, you know, it's implementing AI and also using AI um, to, to monitor the performance of, of, of the model. I'm actually doing a, a, a project uh, currently helping a company uh, use uh, agentic AI. So they're using these software agents running in the background to actually measure and monitor the accuracy that the, the model out, model's output. Bernie, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for joining me today. Great to be here.